NASCOM has recently said that they are predicting that the Indian startup ecosystem is going to create more than 80,000 jobs. Uh, do you agree to the whole idea? Do you think that the Indian startup ecosystem has the capacity to do something like that? I, I think it's probably more than 80,000 jobs in the long term. I think every time we, we talk to a startup, we know that they're going to grow. And, and maybe they're not going to grow into a, a huge multinational overnight. But every successful startup will be employing local people and people who couldn't get a job in another industry will be able to take up those opportunities. So I've, I've heard numbers as high as 200,000 jobs and that would be a great, really good benefit of the startup ecosystem for the country. So yeah, I, I agree with NASCOM and others that it, it is a, uh, an employment engine that will kick in as more and more startups generate more and more jobs. Right. Uh, you know, going ahead, the NASCOM is very, very bullish about the startup ecosystem in India. However, we have several observers who are coming out and saying that 2016-17 is going to be a year of consolidation and shakeouts. Uh, what are your comments on that? I think I've read the same reports as everyone else about the bubble in, in valuations in particular. And I think there are some sectors in the market that are a little bit overheated and some of the, the valuations are, are not realistic. So yes, there will be some effect of that. But there are other segments of the market which are still kicking on and, and will grow very fast. So I believe it will be some balance, but there'll also be good and bad stories amongst that. There'll be, a, there'll be some really successful sectors and some other sectors. And I think the one that most people talk about at the moment is food delivery, where it's probably overheated. There are too many players. The valuations are crazy. And that you can see already the retraction in those sectors. Other sectors that we're bullish about, like education and agriculture, will continue to grow and benefit the country. The Indian startup system, of course, it's rapidly growing. It's growing with every passing day. And the Indian government is looking at it as a sunshine to the Indian economy. But the startups are a little intimidated, you know. Yes. They are saying that it's not the government's business to do business. So what are your comments on that? I, I think every startup entrepreneur is innovative and they will find a way to get the best out of the government programs without letting them interfere or over interfere with their business because they are in charge of their own business. And that's why entrepreneurs start their own business because they don't want people telling them what to do. They'll take advantage of every government program that assists them, but if it's, if it's not going to assist them, they'll ignore it or find a way around it. And that's what we, we love about startups. The, the e entrepreneurs in the ecosystem are the ones who are doing things that are different. The government can sit back and plan years ahead, but the startups work on a very fast time scale and they're going to find ways of tapping into that money that's available to them, taking advantage of any, any support they're getting from the government, but continuing to do what they want to do, which is run their own business. So the state is now turning into an accelerator for them. Do you think it's a good sign for the startups or it's, is it a bad sign for the startups? I think it's an earlier stage that the governments are looking at rather than calling them accelerators. Usually we call them incubators and they are very, very early, really early stage um, environments for people to try something without the kind of support that they'd get from an accelerator like ours. They're, they're not going to get all of the, the business support and mentoring from a government sponsored incubator, but they will get a start. They'll have somewhere where they can ask some questions, get some things going. And simple things like setting up a company, that can be done as part of the, uh, the incubator program that's sponsored by a state government. And then they can move into a, a commercial accelerator and take advantage of that for the next stage of their growth. Make in India also things like Stand Up India and you know, Start Up India, Modi's policy, they outrightly they look a very facilitating policy for the startups. But do you think that this is a lot of interference from the you know, central government into the whole startup ecosystem? Interference in some ways, but also great to see that, that the Prime Minister has put these programs in place because it, it will create an environment for, say, investors outside India to see that the Indian government is supporting the industry here. That will encourage them for investments into India and it will give the startups more opportunity, I think. I, I agree that, that there may be some government interference, but if you look at some of the policies that Prime Minister Modi announced, they're actually making it easier for startups. They're reducing their, their compliance requirements. They're making it easier to start a new company up. They're making it better and more tax efficient to start up a, a business over the first few years. So I don't think they're all negative. I think they're, they're positive. So these startups are really at the most, living at the mercy of venture capitalists and angel investors in the country. Do you think that we need more um, initiative like that of SoftBank in India? I think the banks are in a difficult position where it's, it's very difficult to loan money to a startup and they shouldn't be loaning money to a startup. It, it takes a different type of investment vehicle to make startups work.
and the biggest gap is when they're really quite small before they are actually getting traction in the market. And that's where we come in. We try and introduce them to early stage investors, seed investors, angels and pre-seed. And that gives them the runway then to grow their business to the point where the VCs who have the money sitting there ready to invest have confidence in them to be able to invest. That is the biggest gap and that's one that we try and, and fit ourselves. So we, we want to try and work with the banking system if we can, but we need to also fill that gap to the point where the banks and the VCs do have the confidence to be able to invest in these entrepreneurs and their startups. What are the sectors that you're going to bet in India in the near future? We believe that education is, is a great industry to invest in, um, not only for India for, but for other parts of the world. So often when we look for startups in India, we look at the potential for them to go outside India as well. So education startups in India will pretty much stand alone. They can, they can survive because the market's so big here. Uh, the other areas we're looking at for 2016 are healthcare and health technology. Uh, agriculture and agriculture technology and then we also have some some bets in other areas which are emerging like IOT, Internet of Things, drones and, and other robotic devices that will be in the future. So we're trying to spread our portfolio across a number of portfolio, uh, a number of segments in the market. So that's the sectors that we're looking at this year but we'll maintain a broad portfolio as well and not put all our bets into one sector.